Do you live a connected life? Your answer to this question is probably yes. You're connected to great Wi-Fi. You've got 1,000 friends on one social media platform and 3,000 connections on another. If you're an entrepreneur or business person, you have to be connected. You have to have a network of people that you can tap into when you need it for business or for support. So as a society, we place great importance on being connected. When was the last time you went for an entire day without looking at your phone? Have you ever gone for an entire day without looking at your phone? So I'm sure we can all agree that because we do place such great importance on being connected, we can look at the importance of connected, connecting the unconnected. But who are the unconnected? Where do they live? And how difficult is it to connect them? And what happens when the concept of being connected goes beyond fiber lines or the quality of our Wi-Fi? Because this is when connected becomes layered a series of interconnected layers that all need to be in place to truly and successfully connect the unconnected. So today I would like to introduce you to three people. This is Brian, Nandamiso, and Sabu. They are entrepreneurs from Dipslurt. Brian runs an online radio station, Dipslurt Radio. Sabu and Nandamiso run a social enterprise, Bumba.mobi, that specializes in waste management. This is Dipslurt. It's a 12 square kilometer area with a population of about half a million people. So as you can imagine, this is home to a number of social ills. HIV, unemployment, poverty are rife. The police in this area operate with limited resources and because of rampant corruption, crime is a huge problem. Many people in this area lack access to basic services, running water, electricity, healthcare. The average income for men is in the region of 100 euros per month and I haven't been able to find statistics for women, but I'm pretty sure it's lower. Entrepreneurs in this area work under incredibly difficult circumstances. They cannot access basic business resources that so many of us take for granted. And many of them are survivalist entrepreneurs. So they started their own businesses out of desperation to earn an income because they had no other choice and couldn't find a job. One of the key things that is lacking is access to internet and mobile data is incredibly expensive. In fact, a recent report from South Africa showed that 50% of the population is unconnected. That's 28 million people. It's the combined population of Denmark, Norway, Austria, and Switzerland. So just think about that for a few moments. So our first layer of connecting the unconnected is obvious. It's internet connectivity. Cebu and Nandamiso need a place to work from. They need Wi-Fi. They need devices on which to access the internet. They have to be able to interact with clients, be able to send quotes, send emails. So we give them an open workspace. We give them devices. We give them access to the internet. So they should be all sorted. But it's not that simple. Because our second layer of connecting the unconnected looks at access to markets and networks. And in fact, this has been dubbed as one of the biggest problems facing entrepreneurs globally. So we assist them. We provide networking opportunities where they can connect with potential clients. We provide them with a digital presence, websites, social media pages. We look for opportunities where they can submit proposals and we work with them to create these proposals so they're really good. We use their services within our own organization so that we can give them a client base and referrals. But this is where our layers start getting a little bit more complicated and a little bit more beyond our control. Because our third layer of connecting is infrastructure and mobility. Now, South Africa has a history of apartheid spatial planning, which meant that areas like Dipslurt were specifically located away from urban areas and economic hubs. So people spent huge amounts of money on transport and time traveling around the city. In fact, it's not uncommon for South Africans to spend up to 50% of their income on transport. And that's not taking into account the hours and hours that are wasted while they are in, that tra in this transport. In fact, Brian missed a meeting with a crucial client because he couldn't get there. He didn't have the cash, it's a cash-based system, to pay for transport. 
His electricity had been down the night before, so he wasn't able to contact the people to let them know. But we can fix this. We can help Brian with a small cash loan when he needs it to get transport. We can give him a space to charge his phone. But this doesn't help Brian when our notoriously bad public transport system is on strike and there is no other alternative. It doesn't help him when the open workspace gets hit by the same electricity crisis and there is nowhere in the immediate surroundings where he can access electricity. And this is when we realize that simple solutions are just not good enough. So our fourth layer that we need to look at is working in a community that is different to your own. Understanding what makes them special, understanding what makes them unique and what unique challenges they face. Because it would be very, very easy to write Brian off as being unreliable because he doesn't show up for meetings and miss the fact that his radio station provides a really good training ground for a lot of youngsters in the area who have gone on to bigger and better things in the media industry. It would be really easy to write off Spoo and Nandamiso as lazy because they don't respond to emails and miss their passion for cleaning up the community and creating a better environment for everybody around them. In fact, Nandamiso will tell you she was born in Dipslert. It's her home. And while many people get very frustrated with the circumstances that they live in, she sees it as being a motivator and the center of opportunities, an opportunity to do something better. Sboo believes that our past does not dictate our future. And in fact, it is our very interconnectedness and entrepreneurial spirit that feeds us and keeps us alive. The spirit of Ubuntu, I am because you are a South African concept that encompasses all the virtues of humanity and compassion. So all of these layers need to come together if we are truly to connect the unconnected. But now we need to talk about the invisible layer. And this is the impact on our worlds of empowering other people. I initially met these three entrepreneurs when I started working for a trust that runs an open work center and tech hub in the area. And my initial reaction was probably very similar to yours. What can I do? How can I help? What do they need? Because I'm an entrepreneur, they're entrepreneurs, we're all in the same boat, we can all help each other out, we all need the same stuff. But I didn't understand. I didn't connect with them as individuals and I didn't take the time to understand their uniqueness, their mindsets and their upbringings. I made the same mistake that so many of us make when we connect with people that are different to ourselves. People from different race groups, different countries, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I assumed they were all one homogenous group of people. A group of people who all wanted the same thing. A group of people that I could swoop in and save because I was their savior. This is what I was going to do. The reality is that privilege buys you individuality. And in my middle class suburb, we're allowed to be individuals. We're allowed individual dreams, individual desires, even individual problems. I had stripped Brian, Nandamisa, and Cebu of their individuality. I knew what was best for them. I was their savior. And in doing so, I had imposed my will on them. How could I begin to understand the people in this community? Many of them have suffered the worst of apartheid South Africa. I have no idea what scars that left them with. I have no idea what it's like to be ill and not have access to medical cover. I have no idea what it's like to live in poverty, to live with abuse, with addiction. I have no idea how it feels to be forcibly removed from where you lived and dumped in an area that at the time was in the middle of nowhere because that's how Dipslet started in the mid-90s. There was no infrastructure. There were no shops, there were no schools, there were no jobs. And at this point, I had to actually stop and reflect on my motives. Because it is easy to help the underdog. But what happens when my underdog rises up and demands to be treated with dignity and respect? It is very easy to keep people that are different to you at arm's length, but it's a very different situation when they are living next door and threatening your way of life and your income.
But perhaps it's easier for me to keep them suppressed because then I remain in control. I remain in control of their lives and I remain in control of their destinies. Because is there really enough to go around? And am I giving away my power if I give to somebody else? Because I believe there is enough to go around. And if we are to truly connect the unconnected, we need to do so from a mentality of abundance. Sharing with you does not mean that I have less. We are all interconnected, Ubuntu. I am because you are. We have a symbiotic relationship with the people, the environment, and the context in which we live. Not unlike zebras and oxpeckers. Oxpeckers are birds that ride around on zebras' backs, picking mites and parasites out of their coats. Zebra benefits because he's got a parasite-free coat. The oxpecker benefits because he gets fed. But this relationship goes deeper because oxpeckers are really good at sensing danger. And when they do, they let out a specific cry that lets the zebra herd know it's time to run. It is a mutually beneficial relationship in which no one party is superior to the other and they both benefit. The migrant crisis in Europe has reached epic proportions. And this is not a uniquely European problem. I hear stories every day of refugees moving across borders in Africa. We all know what's happening in the Americas because they are in a similar situation. We are faced with new and different people every day who might be the underdog right now, but they will not be for long. And maybe, just maybe, this crisis brings with it some opportunities, different cultures, different skill sets, even if the opportunity is as simple as getting a different perspective on the world. Because right now, we all need to re-examine our connectedness and we need to re-examine our motives. And this might seem like a mammoth task, a task that no one individual can take on. But if we all do something small, we can have a huge impact. Give people the privilege of being an individual, individual dreams, individual desires, individual problems. Give them a seat at the table, no matter how small that table is. Give them a voice and allow their voices to be heard in rooms where people presume they have nothing to say. Connect with them in a mutually beneficial relationship. Connect with them in the spirit of Ubuntu. Brian, Sabu, and Andamiso taught me resilience. They taught me how to look for opportunity in the face of adversity. They taught me humility and the dangers of assumption. And when I took the time to connect with them, I was the one who benefited. So now I ask you, how can you connect and benefit? Thank you very much. Thank you.